Pratt here and today we're gonna jump back on this Corvette finally kind of been we've kind of been held up trying to find parts I had a really good connection with parts and he hooked us up with a lot of stuff and I guess I was too much of a cheap ass and now he won't answer my calls or emails it is what it is we lost a little bit of time had to spend a little bit more money that's just the gamble you got to do when you got these budget jobs Anyways, we have been working on the car. Jake actually worked on the car while I was out of town for a little bit. I'm gonna get you caught up with all that footage. And then we can jump back on this thing and see how far we get this video. some footage a few weeks ago when we could work in t-shirts of Jake slamming this car together I pulled it out of the booth and I didn't want a bunch of fresh parts just floating around the shop so I shoved them all in the car and he actually came in when I was out of town and really started putting them on the car for good and then we got jammed up with parts um, let's uh, let's go take a look at these parts right, we got a ton of hardware the guy that hooked me up with this hardware he actually has a ton of Corvettes I don't know how he acquired them but he was hooking us up with used parts for a while, helping us out pretty well, and he even helped me out with a huge pile of hardware because I told him I was short on hardware. We got some new hardware too. We got a ton of other new parts, just stuff that we probably could have got used if we sourced hard enough, but man, I looked, and we haven't worked on this car in four weeks. It was time to get a roll on it. We even got headlights. And these headlights obviously are not OEM, as you can see. They don't look too hateful. I mean, they're not gonna look too bad. Once we get this car with like a Z06 looking front lip, splitter, and like a wing, these headlights are gonna look good on there. Especially with like a set of wheels and all. So all kinds of stuff. You see we got like a hood latch cable. This, believe it or not, is like 1700 bucks worth of parts. And uh, it, we just had to do it. We were, we've been waiting so long. We actually had to go through GM to get this stuff. It is what it is. I waited long enough. I probably could have waited a little bit longer and saved even more money, but sometimes you just gotta like, you know, go between save money or you wanna get the car done. And right now, we're pretty good on budget that we could afford to do some OEM parts. Jake is kind of like 
the lead guy on this job. He's been taking it apart, fixing it, and putting it together. I did my little bit of work of body work and paint, which still contributes to about the same amount of time. Um, anyways, he's doing his own footage on the scar too. He's got a small channel of his own where he works on like his kids' bikes and stuff like that and his own vehicles, just stuff around the house. But if you want a more technical video of how we're taking stuff apart and putting it together, go check out his channel. If you're looking for a video like that, I just kind of like take them apart, paint them, and vlog in the middle of it. I don't know what I'm doing. Jake just found a cell phone that was in the car. I don't know, let's charge it. I've never even heard of this cell phone Alcatel. It's weird. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just hoping I can like reset it, hook it to Wi-Fi, and let my kids play on YouTube. My wife had to go to the store, so my second son Riley's hanging out with us. My youngest. Make sure he's doing a good job. I got my supervisor. These are gonna line up first try. I'll out. I'll shut it. <laughs> if you shove it. <laughs> uh, we're, way, we're way too tight over here. So. All right. so we gotta adjust it. Yeah. Those lines looking pretty good. Not gonna lie, I didn't help much, but from what I seen, it looked like a pain in the ass. But uh, he got it looking pretty good. I lined this up pretty well. There's a lot to this hood, and I've said this in the earlier videos. Everything on a vet has a ton of room to line stuff up with. In other words, every hole, like this hole here, is you know, egg shaped, it's long wise. See these, it's adjusted forward, backwards, left and right. Look how much room there is. They do that for a reason. All these Corvettes are, are damn near aluminum and fiberglass. So every time you make a part, it's not gonna be as consistent as the one before. So they leave a lot of wiggle room to line it up, which is good for us, because we can take this hood, no matter where the fender is, we can get the hood to fit in between it somehow. So. But of course, this thing has two latches that we have to line up. These hinges, they look like trunk hinges the way they open up, but those were kind of hard to adjust, but. Spent about two hours on it, and we got a hood with some decent looking gaps. This is a little complicated. It looks like a big giant air duct that leads all the air to the condenser and radiator and tried like pushing the radiator forward and shoving it in there. It looked like it would just slip right in there and it kind of did. But then we got a huge bracket under here that it actually all ties in together and I was sitting in front of it so we dropped the bracket and that dropped the entire radiator condenser on the ground. So now Jake's rounding up some bolts so we can actually kind of like mount it to the top here to hold it in place and then we'll work on putting the bottom back up. But yeah, it's pretty complicated. We really wish we would have did this first before we just spent hours adjusting this hood, but we are not touching this hood. This thing needs to stay just like this. So we uh, definitely barely know what we're doing here. We're 
were laying down here, we noticed something kind of important. Oh, man. You could try to zoom in, but that bracket right there, it's an ABS bracket, and it is broke. Uh, we were wondering why the ABS was so loose. It might be an expensive part, might be a cheap part, who knows. Uh, I'm gonna try to source it used first, though. So we can probably actually just bolt them in and leave them in. Oh, okay, that's cool. It's not too hateful. I'm gonna put the hood down. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a vet. That actually doesn't look too bad. I'm not a fan of aftermarket lights, but like I said, because we had to do this on a budget, we had to go with them, but they don't even look that bad. Now, how well they light up the road is another question. Another thing is, is we don't really have our harness fixed yet. It's kind of like whatever. And apparently they don't like to sell used harnesses. So I'm pretty sure we can get one cut and they'll just give it to us maybe. To put an actual OEM harness in this thing, it's gonna cost a lot of money. I'm trying to avoid that. That's what it comes down to later down the road. It is what it is, but we're gonna try to cheat route first to get these headlights and everything working so we can wire this up. But anyways, uh, but it looks like with the harness doing this, for the headlights hanging out, we can actually put the headlights in. We can put this entire bumper together with all those shields and stuff. So we can actually put it together and leave it together. Cause that'd be nice. I know. <laughs> this thing said Metro PCS service. What the heck? Let's see what we got on the camera. I'm really curious about this, man. I wonder if there's anything good on here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it says, dude, what the F happened? You told me you were coming here. <laughs> yeah, he didn't make it. He wrecked his vet. <laughs> <laughs> Got 10 missed calls. Come on, show me the camera. Oh my God, I hope we don't see anything bad on here. Oh, we got a blurry picture of food. More food. All right. Oh, this got balling out. Got some Ralph Lauren. 140 mile an hour. <laughs> Looks like you could do 140 mile an hour on there. Damn, I can't get that to focus. <laughs> 138, 132. What are you doing? Oh, what the hell? All right, let's go back. My man hitting 140 mile an hour. Maybe that's why he wrecked it. All right, 31, 123. I think that's all the pictures he has on here, which is good. I didn't want to see anything weird. It was like my guy just figured out how to use a phone, look how blurry that is. Looking more and more complete. Those headlights ain't that bad for China. <laughs> I am like putting this story together in my head with this phone. 
I, I guarantee you this guy somehow, the previous owner, who knows, someone will probably know him and tell him. That's not the truth. Anyways, but it looks like he got a lot of money. Uh, he bought himself a phone, because the phone ain't that old. There's only a few pictures on it. He bought himself a Corvette. You know, he had pictures of uh, his Corvette doing 140 mile an hour on there. This guy then went shopping. He had dinner and drinks, and he was supposed to pick up his boy Kobe, and never showed up. <laughs> Poor guy, he's probably out having the time of his life and bam, gone. I guarantee you because the car is a clean title that he might have not had insurance on it, somehow paid cash for it and uh, they probably hit him with a $30,000, $35,000 repair bill and he said, nope, I'm out. Mark, like we scratched it. I want to take care of it. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Starting to come together. Looking like a vet. Finally put a mass airflow sensor on there. Cause it was missing before. Hit it real quick. Sounds like a vet. All right, right now it's an eco mode. Okay. We've got touring mode, sport mode, track mode. Track mode. Oh, uh, it got deeper. Okay. Yeah, the Supra has the same thing. You put it on like sport mode and it like opens a valve up in the exhaust and just gets louder. So I'm pretty sure this thing has the same thing. I know nothing about these American muscle cars. <laughs> and here we have a semi completed, pretty much almost done 2017 Corvette. <laughs> um, it looks pretty completed, but we still got small little things left to do. Uh, for instance, we got, you know, the wheel wells have to be replaced. I didn't put the wheel wells in there yet. Number one, it's easier to do it on the lift. So when I get it on the lift, that's when I'll do it. Number two, we still have to do a lot of wiring on this. This wiring harness kind of like snakes through here. And it's really easy to repair and replace the wiring harness with the wheel wells out. Uh, you can kind of see in there. No, you can't. Anyways, there's like wires hanging out down there and all. Wheels and tires. We have wheels and tires. They're actually sitting outside. I just got to take it to work and set the bead fill it up with air, bring it back, and I'll throw those on. This vent, I'm sourcing this vent. Apparently where these parts were kept before is where that vent's at, so I didn't buy one yet. Hopefully I don't have to buy one, I can find it. The rest of this car is put together. We need a wheel well in here. We're also gonna replace the clips that hold this bumper on. This, this bumper is just sitting here right now. It fits up a little bit better than that, but it doesn't fit up as tight as the other side. So we're thinking that we just need to replace the clips in there and we're gonna bolt that bag on. When that's all fixed, we'll put this tail light bezel in there. And man, I really wanna show you guys what that tub looked like, because it was destroyed before. And I want like a nice before and after. Jake ended up, when he was putting the car together, he dusted the satin black on there and and I didn't have a really good shot of it, but maybe when we get this bumper taken back off to replace the clips in there, I'll get a good before and after of the tub because that was a crucial part of this repair is how well that repair came out. So it might look close to finish cosmetically, but we actually have a little bit of mechanical work to do to it. Also, we noticed that the rear wheel had a huge chunk taken out of it. It obviously took a pretty decent hit. Now, visually, it doesn't look like any of the control arms are bent any type of way. We We've had it up in the air. The cross member under there didn't take that much of a hit as we could see, uh, but there is some axle grease under there and I do have a clunking sound when I'm putting it in park and drive and reverse. So I think the joint of the axle might have been jolted toward the boot. So we might have to replace an axle. And in the front here, we have a cross member for it. It's actually over here. I've had this cross member for probably longer than I've had the car. I picked up that part before I even got the car to my shop. This car, the cross member looks like it took a hit underneath and it's missing a pretty big chunk. 
The chunk doesn't affect the driving of it whatsoever right now, but it just doesn't look safe. So we decided to replace it. And when I replaced that cross member, we're actually gonna replace that ABS bracket that I found earlier was cracked. So the car is still not completely done yet, but it's super, super glowed. You know how cars go. I'm sure we got some surprise in the end waiting for us. I am sure of it. These cars don't go together that easy. Anyways, I'm gonna jump off here, edit this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. My channel is getting a little bit more attention right now. It's really cool. I got more videos to come. And number one thing, after watching me, Go work on something of your own. I'll see y'all later.